Good day, humans. Poetic does been here in the arena for another session of gaming. And tonight, today, or whichever is right, we're featuring an Azurius control deck with Iorion, the Dream Trawler, Kairuda, and Ugin. Yes, those powerful cards right inside one deck. I've been wanting to do this for a couple of months now, but uh, this is the day, right? Uh, I call this deck Gaiorgin Trawler. Don't ask why, it's just a combination of the names, right? But uh, the purpose of the deck is to overwhelm, nah, not actually overwhelm, like control your opponents on their first turns by launching Omen of the Sun, Glass Casket, Shatter the Sky, and all of those things. Then put down the big guns and the latter part of the game with Dream Trawler and flicker them with the Orion or you know, launch Gairuda and put down Dream Trawler for free. Or maybe in the end game, you can cast Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, and wipe out everything on board. So, let's, uh, well, yeah, before we go on with the deck content, have a cup of coffee. Straight from my MTG Arena mug. Customize. So, if you want one, or want to avail of one, just message me down below. Right? So, let's go back with the deck content. So, we have Yori on the Sky Nomad as our companion. So, you have to satisfy its uh, parameters, or what you call it. You have to have an 80 card deck as a minimum to use Yorion as your companion. So what does it do? When Yorion enters a battlefield, you exile any number of other non-land permanents you own and control you own, okay? And return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. So it's like, when you cast Yorion, oh yeah, one more thing. Um, a companion is like, outside of the game, you put it in your hand by paying three colorless mana, then you can use it. So when it goes down the battlefield and you have, let's say, um, Omen of the Sun already on the battlefield, you can exile that. Then it comes back uh, at the end step and you get another two tokens and you get two life. You gain two life. Okay? So it, it just flicker it in a way, right? So we have... For the cards, for the deck, right? We have three charming prints. You know what this do. You know what it does, right? When Charming Prince enters the battlefield, you choose one, scry two, you gain three life, or exile another target creature you own, and return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. It's like a, um, a small version of Yorion, although you just flicker one creature, right? And we have Flicker of Fate. It also exiles target creature enchantment, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So we're flickering things here, okay? And we have Glass Basket for early removal yeah, when glass casket enters the battlefield you exile target creature and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or less three or less okay and only creatures you can use this with okay then we have birth of melodies yeah it's a, it's an uh, enchantment saga card so uh, on the first turn you get to search your library for a basic paint card reveal it put it in your hand then shuffle your library then on the second saga we have you create a zero for colorless wall artifact creature token with defender force walls and defenders they're defenders then the last part of the saga is again to life okay and we have omen of the sea so what does omen of the sea do it's a flash enchantment card when you cast it for two mana one blue and one colorless you get to scry two then draw a card then you can also sacrifice it paying three man three manas with one blue mana and you get to scry two same with the omen of the sun it's also a flash card but this time when you cast it you create two uh, one one white human soldier creature tokens then you gain two life then you can also sacrifice it to scry two and a good addition to this deck is the skyclave apparition 
uh, it's a uh, it costs with uh, I mean when you cast it you need to pay two white mana and one colorless white mana so it's three casting costs it's a core spirit creature so when skyclave apparition enters the battlefield you exile up to one target non-land non-token permanent you don't control with converted mana cost four or less okay that's good the other part is when skyclave apparition leaves the battlefield the exiled cards owner creates an xx blue illusion creature token where x is a converted mana cost of the exiled card this is a very good card actually uh, why not you just give them a creature like the most that you can give them is a 4-4 creature which you can actually remove with glass basket or uh, bounce it with brazen borrower or anything right and yeah speaking of brazen borrower I, I don't play blue cards without this one uh, Brazen Borrower, yep, the Adventure Fairy Rogue card. So it's a pet, the, the petty theft portion is an instant when you return target non land permanent. An opponent controls, an opponent only your opponent controls into its owner's hand. It's a bounce card. Okay, then the other one that the creature portion is a flash flying Brazen Borrower. It can only block, I mean, it can only block creatures with flying, right? And we have two Midnight Clock. Why? I don't know. I like Midnight Clock. I just put it there because it's good. Okay, so it's a three caster, three casting cost artifact with a blue, one blue mana and two colorless, right? So when you tap it, it produces one blue mana, and the other one is you put an hour counter, you pay three. Put an hour counter on the midnight clock at the beginning of each up upkeep. Put an hour counter on midnight clock. So your upkeep and your opponent's upkeep. It, uh, I mean, it gains a counter for each, right? When the 12 hour counter is put on midnight clock, you shuffle your hand and your graveyard into your library. Then you draw seven cards, huh? right? You get to draw seven cards when it reaches 12, like midnight clock, 12, right? 12 counters. Then we have, yes, Shatter the Sky, you know, each player who controls with four or greater draws a card, then you destroy all creatures. It's more of a Wrath of God or something, but cost less, but uh, the opponent gets to draw a card, at least a card, you know. And we have Emp Emp sorry, Elspeth Conquers Death, yep, another Saga card. The exile target permanent opponent controls with converted mana cost 3 or greater. So this time it's 3 or greater. Okay? 3 or greater, remember that. Then on the second saga, the non-creature spells your opponent controls cast casting cost. It, it costs 2 more to cast until your next turn. So, uh... Non-creature spells, let's say uh, they're gonna cast on someone, instead of costing one, now it costs three to cast, okay? Then the third saga is return target creature planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield, then put a plus one plus one counter or a loyalty counter on it. So, let's say uh, your dream crawler dies, it goes back to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. Got it? Yep, and we have an additional two Yorion Sky Nomad. Two. Okay. Another two. So I've already explained that one, you know, so we're gonna skip that one. And we have four dream trawlers. Yeah, that trawler. Uh, it's just weird sometimes when you put this down and the opponent will concede, right? Well, of course, when you have a lot of cards in your hand. You know why? Because it's a flying lifelink Sphinx. It costs 6 mana to cast. It's, it's, it's very uh, expensive in a way. Because you have to pay 2 white mana and 2 blue mana to cast it. And another 2 colorless. But the ability is really cool. See, whenever you draw a card, this guy gets plus 1, plus 0 till end of turn. And whenever Dream Trawler attacks, you draw a card. So it gets it gets at around 5-5, five five, the least, right? Whenever you attack it. Then the other port, the other ability is, you know, it's annoying in a way. You discard a card, Dream Trawler gains hex poop until the end of turn, you tap it. So if you have a lot of cards in your hand and you don't have a, uh, a uh, mass 
destruction card it won't die because it gains hex proof until the end of turn right and we have gairuda doom of deaths yes supposed to be a companion card but i just use it here so when gairuda enters the battlefield each player builds four cards put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among the milled cards under the battlefield under your control so it's either yours or your opponent's graveyard so on your graveyard you can only of course get the least you can get here is a charming prince and the rest would be the dream trawler yeah dream trawler then we have two Ugin, the spirit dragon. Why? Because I like Ugin and I will use it again and again whenever I like it. Now it looks good. I mean, it, it works well with this card deck. Okay. So what does it do? It's an eight casting cost legendary planeswalker. It deals uh, the plus two. The, the, the first ability is plus two, deals three damage to any target. Then minus X, exile each permanent with converted mana cost x or less that's one or more colors so if you have a let's say if you have a creature with casting cost three to one and you want to exile all of them you have to pay three so you can exile all of them all the creature cards right and of course the the boom the explosion the power minus 10 you gain seven life draw seven cards then put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield <laughs> yeah well in a certain way i get to use that ability with this deck okay for four lands we have one castle arden vale 10 planes two castle ventress 10 islands four temple of enlightenment four rogrin trium two crawling barons and four fabled passage ask me why there are no double face cards here because i want to maximize my turn by having less top mana i mean top lands each turn so that's it anyway that's it for the uh, deck content let's get it on with the game we're up against with this weasel let's see oh my god i go first i'm gonna keep this one good lands i like doing that see Ah, mm -hmm. oh, lord. Sometimes it's not the player's fault when it's, when it's getting, you know, sort of delayed or lag. It's the client or something. So you just have to wait. It also has Yorion. Oh my god. Now that's a different Yorian. Pass a turn. Nice land. I should have launched this one. Swamp. Oh my god, it's like a five. Yeah, that's just not. Omen of the sun! Nice. Yeah, what a heartless act. Are we gonna get all of those lands? Yeah, why not? Let's get it on. It's 
flicker it or something. You just need a blocker. <sighs> then we can glass casket it when, it's, uh, when it goes down. L doing this you can get Ugin anyway I have another Ugin down there why not go have another land you can destroy that one is a good flicker thing there you go Go ahead, exile my. Oh my god, he just exiled my whole graveyard. He's <laughs> actually figuring out how to remove my uh, creature. If he wouldn't have at least used the Elspeth Nightmare. I would have cast the uh, would have casted I think casted or cast I don't know I would have put down Ugin Elspeth oh my god really Sun's grace, my graveyard this I have. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> well, that's it for another game. Let's go on with another game. The trawler. They quit when they see the trawler. Yeah, next game, please. Let's see. We're up against Kurt Master. And, oh my god, we're not going first. That's creepy. Yeah, let's. Have it your way. That's not good. I 
are we gonna <laughs> why did I do that I don't know It's rare. If he attacks, I'm gonna kill it too. Nah, I'm not. I'm gonna use my Leonin. Yeah, let's use that thing. <laughs> it's flicker time. Do you want to attack? Oh, it doesn't want to attack! Why is that? I know what now. What's this? What is this? So, when the opponent attacks with creatures, when the opponent attacks with creatures, if you remove those creatures, blah, 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 you draw a card. Okay, I'm not going to attack anyway. Whenever the opponent casts their second spell, each turn you draw a card. Wow! That's annoying. I haven't used it actually. They're not gonna attack. Not really. Or are they gonna attack? Ooh. Nah, let's just block it. <laughs> not that stupid, you know. Being life. It's always uh, giving me the awesome. What? Why not? people man trying to concede uh, okay let's get it on with the last game yep and now uh, oh, I think I've already faced pandemonium before but uh, let's see
the opponent goes first again. Again, I should remove glass casket and more of a unsummon or counter. Golded goose. Yeah, shatter the sky will do. We need more lands. Thing we have planes. <laughs> I'd like you to meet my friend. Stop. The green green goblin. Who's that? And Coria answers. Vigilance counter. How unfortunate. card and discard a card. Yeah. Ouch. That hurts. Are we gonna let them attack? We're gonna block this one. Are we gonna block that one? No, of course not. We're just gonna wait. Oh my god, that's uh, okay, fine. And this card, you date. Oh. oh. Cute swarm. I call and a courier answers. He really attacked me. My God, the nerve. Mutate is too. We can actually send that back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. Go back.
Te quiero enseñarte. Come on, baby, come on. He's actually thinking of if he can six. He's gonna be doing this one. Ooh. Yeah, boy, come on. I could have flickered it. I could have flickered it! Am I gonna wait till uh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.
God damn it, 20 cylinders. Are you done? One way to kill that guy. <laughs> God damn that mutate tech. Well, anyway, that's it for tonight. It's a good ender, actually. Well, the thing about this deck is I've seen it. It doesn't do well against um, rogue mill decks. Um, it's really messed up, man, especially the flash decks. Uh, we can't have it checked or it's gonna have us controlled anyway um that's all for tonight uh hope you enjoyed it uh for anyone who wants to say something comment on something or you know suggest a deck to be featured just put it down below in the comment section and that'll be all still the next video Bye, humans.